The French society in the 18th century was a part of the feudal system that dated back to the Middle Ages. The term old regime is usually used to describe the society and institutions of France before 1789. Now, this feudal society was traditionally divided into three estates, which was roughly equivalent to social classes. The first estate was made up of the clergy and it was considered highest on the social ladder. It possessed an enormous amount of power and it was made up of just 0.5% of the population, but it owned 10% of all the land in France. The church's importance allowed it to accumulate vast amount of wealth. The church extracted its share of taxes called as tithes from the peasants. Tithes refers to one-tenth of annual produce or earnings. The second estate was made up of nobles. The nobles made up 1.5% of the total population. These were the richest of the nobility held top jobs in government, army and courts. Although the second estate was considered to be the nobility, there were some that were poor, many of them had some wealth and few of them were filthy rich. Both the first estate and the second estate did not want anything to change in France unless there was a chance they could gain more political power. So about 60% of the land was owned by the nobles and the church and other rich members of the third estate. And the first estate and the second estate did not require to pay any taxes. The nobles further enjoyed feudal privileges. These included feudal dues, which they extracted from the peasants. Now, a peasant or a worker known as a vassal received a piece of land in return for serving a lord. Peasants were obliged to render services to the lord, to work in his house and fields, to serve in the army and to participate in building roads. Coming to the third estate, 98% of the population was made up of different groups of people. This was middle class, bankers, merchants, lawyers, doctors, journalists and professors. 9 out of 10 people in this group were peasants. The peasants and the city workers overworked and they were underpaid and they were objected to most of the living conditions and politics in France. All the members of the third estate had to pay taxes to the state. And these included a direct tax called Teli, which was a direct land tax on the French peasants and non-nobles. And a number of indirect tax, which were levied on articles of everyday consumption like salt or tobacco. The struggle to survive. Now the population of France rose from about 23 million in 1715 to 28 million in 1789. This led to a rapid increase in the demand for food grains. Now the production of grains could not keep in pace with the demand. So the price of bread, which was the staple diet of majority, rose rapidly. Most workers were employed as laborers in workshops, whose owner fixed their wages. But the wages did not keep pace with the rising price. So the gap between the poor and the rich widened. Things became worse whenever drought or hail reduced their harvest. This led to subsistence crisis, that is survival crisis. Something that occurred frequently in France during the old regime. So did they never fight against these injustices? Let us see. In the past, peasants and workers had participated in revolts against increasing taxes and food scarcity. But they lacked the means and programs to carry out full-scale measures that would bring about a change in the social and economic order. This was left to those groups within the third estates who had become 
prosperous and had access to education and new ideas. So when and how did the revolution begin?